Yo, this is Matt from Upsilon Mining coming back at you with another video. So today's video, I'm going to be moving all of these 1660 Ti's into this server case. So we have eight of them right there. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so as you guys have known, I'm having some heating issues, basically where cards are getting way too hot in the grow tents, the basement's getting way too hot, and I'm having a lot of issues with the temperature getting way too hot and cards getting into the red and in the yellow and high 70s and sometimes 80s on the core temps, which is absolutely insane and too high uh, for my liking. So what I decided to do was buy a bunch more of these server cases uh, from Spider Miner these are simple server cases that support up to eight GPUs, have three high-powered ASIC fans on them to suck the air out, um, and an external power supply. And I find them to be really good for the price. Basically, for under 500 Canadian, I can get one of these, which is comparable to that of if I were to go out and buy a motherboard, a CPU, memory, a frame, risers, a power supply, and everything. And this comes with everything, including an 1800 watt power supply. Um, that can be ran on 240 volts. So these things, things can power most lower end cards. I wouldn't put 3080s or 3090s in this, but you can probably power even 3070s and definitely 16, uh, like 1660s uh, or even the um, AMD 6600 series type cards and, and whatnot. So anything that doesn't draw too much power um, will be going into this case. Uh, so like I said, I'm starting with these eight of these guys, moving them into here because the heating is just absolutely insane. Okay guys, going into the mining garage. Uh, as you can see, I've actually moved out four of the rigs. These are all 6600 and 6600 XTs. This one was a 1660 Super and TI rig mix. I'm taking some of that and putting it into the server cases and leaving some out here as well. So this basically moves a significant amount of uh, wattage into the garage away from the house. So I don't have to worry about that heating my living area and messing with me. Uh, as I also mentioned earlier, I got 10 GPUs up there in these uh, open air style 5 GPU rigs. They're pretty good. They got ATX style power supplies, so they're very quiet. These ones are a bit louder, so I gotta be careful not putting too many in the garage because they can be a nuisance to the neighbors if they get too loud. So, I mean, works pretty good. The problem is it creates a bubble of hot air near the top. So there we go. It creates a lot of hot air above the shelf itself. So I'm, I'm having a lot of issues with heat extraction in the garage, but only when it gets hot uh, above 30 degrees. When it's below 30 degrees, it's not too bad in here. I might add some fans in here to blow some air from the entranceway inward somehow. Uh, but like I said, moving these out really helped a lot. And as part of that initiative, I'm actually getting rid of, like I said, I'm, or actually not getting rid of, I'm, well, I am getting rid of the 12 GPU 1660 Ti rig because basically it's a like double decker with six and six. Uh, that was just causing way too much heating issues. Uh, things are just getting way too hot when they were stacked right above each other, even in the grow tent. So by splitting them out into uh, HGPU server type style cases, I'm hoping that I can actually improve the uh, thermals and help keep these cards cool during the really hot summer months. Okay guys, so this is the old uh, rack or frame that I had all 12 of those GPUs in. Beautiful looking rig. I really hated having to take it apart, but I'm more about efficiency now. I really wish I would have just had gone with server cases from the beginning instead of building it with these open air style rigs, uh, frames, and having to switch over anyways just because of the cooling issues I was having in the summer. But um, yeah, so I took everything out of this 12 GPU rig. It was really beautiful, this frame. I loved it, actually. Uh, it's got a nice, you know, 12 GPU motherboard, so I was able to hit a bunch of GPUs in there. But unfortunately, they're gonna have to come out of there. All right, guys, so as you can tell, everything's pretty much back on. I just had them off during that one day when it was 31 degrees Celsius, feeling like 35 or 36 with the humid index. It was awful. So basically, uh, these server pieces are back on. I moved this in from the garage. This is a 3060 rig, but I'm having a little issues with the fans on it. And guess what kind of fans they are? That's right, Zotac fans, baby. They're wobbling, and this one stops once in a while. I'm probably gonna have to go and replace these Zotac fans at some point. 
Um, but for now, like at least uh, they're down off that top shelf in the garage. I can monitor them a little better down here. Now let's take a look at what we did with the uh, 1660 Ti's. There we go. So there's the two server cases. Forty nine point seven degrees in this grow tent right now. Uh, we have suction coming out of this tent now uh, from the top and bottom. I, I was going to move the tube to the top to suck it out, but I'm trying it just this way and seeing how it does. So we got two eight inch inline fans creating a lot of suction. Like if you take a look, look at this one here. It's almost like vacuum packed. It's just sucking the air out. And what I did was I opened up the side a flap at the bottom there, same over there, to try to pull colder air from the floor um, into the tent. And it seems to be working pretty good, especially in conjunction with these server cases. I really like these server cases. I like server cases in general, actually, uh, just because they're compact, they're easy to move around, they come free, everything comes, you come get everything you need with it. So I'm gonna go up on, um, probably hop on the computer for a second. Uh, just so I don't have to keep shouting down here because it is loud, and I will see you there. Yo guys, Matt from Upsilon Mining, obviously. Who else would it be? I'm back on the computer now. I just want to talk quick about the uh, this Spider Miner case again. Uh, once again, I am not affiliated, but uh, I felt like I needed to um, explain why I think this is a great case. Um, for one thing, the price. They have a sale right now for four seventy nine twenty Canadian. You can literally get this, if you live in Canada, you can literally get this shipped to your door under $500 Canadian. Uh, the cheapest Octaminer you can get is going to cost easily twice that, plus import fees. Um, so I can't recommend that in good conscience, um, just because the price is way too high when you're getting the exact same thing with this. Now you can argue that this only has three fans, but from what I found, the fans are sufficient in um, extracting the uh, heat from the, the rigs. Doing really good right now. The temperature dropped outside a bit, which is nice. So some cooler temperatures have arrived. Thank you, thank God for another week. Um, so uh, everything is back online. Um, and I've shifted things around quite a bit as well. As I've uh, mentioned, I've, meant, I've shifted some of the um, some of the GPUs into the garage as I showed earlier so I have uh, literally four six rigs in the garage right now uh, so move the good portion of the uh, heat energy the watts away from the basement therefore away from me and the air-conditioned hosts which is a very much needed thing and when it's 31 or plus degrees out when it feels like 35 to 40 and it's been crazy man this this heat dome it has hit again with this heat wave and it was just insane I, like literally when it's 31 degrees you cannot think of anything but cooling down it's literally one of those things you know a good friend of mine once asked me before what would you like would you prefer it to be hot or cold and it, weird at the time i said i prefer it to be hot and he's like no i prefer it to be cold and i couldn't figure that out and he's like well if you're cold you could always warm up <laughs> right you can always put a sweater on you could always warm yourself up easily but if you're freaking hot it's really hard to get that heat away and that's kind of something that i've really discovered once again with uh with, with mining it's like it's, when it's cold it's great you can you know adding the heat from the rigs to the house it keeps the house warm it saves on uh, gas from heating the house or electrical bill from heating the house so you literally don't have heating anymore uh, and it shifts that to heating the house is a useful thing but when it's not useful it becomes a burden and that's what it was so essentially by upgrading a lot of these to server cases so basically i took rig 13 which was basically a 12 gpu rig with 1660 ti's and i moved them into two of these uh eight gpu uh server cases now they both have eight i know that's 16 i took an, an additional uh, four rigs from, uh, sorry, four GPUs from another rig, rig, fi uh, rig five here, which now kind of only has four on there. Uh, so I put them into the server case, um, and that's in the tent, and I put them to the bottom of the tent. So that's another thing I learned. If you take these, G um, these rigs and you put them in server cases, that's a great um, upgrade in and in, in itself, away from the open air uh, style frames. But putting them into a tent is another upgrade because it encapsulates the heat and captures the heat in the tent and uh it, what's even greater is putting them near the bottom of the tent and keeping maybe your least um 
your most resilient or your least demanding rigs at the top because it's gonna, all the heat is going to rise to the top like a hot air balloon uh, and basically the rigs on the bottom will stay cool and when on the top will always have the ones having trouble with the heating, uh, get overheating. That's kind of what I've, what a, an issue that I've had as well. Another update is I had a Zotac fan die on me. So basically this rig is basically down one Zotac uh, GPU right now because the fan was wobbling like crazy, like crazy. Um, which wasn't wasn't spinning at all, so I had to order a new one off of Amazon today, um, and it came out to around twenty dollars for that replacement fan. And I was thinking of just RMAing the thing and sending it into Zotac uh, to replace it, but then it would probably cost me at least twenty dollars in shipping just to ship it there to get it get it sent back. So I think it'd be faster just to get the fan replaced. So that's why we're short the fan on this. Um, I do have an A two thousand coming back as well from Alibaba. I, there was some issue with it, so I sent it back to the seller, and they're shipping it back to me. And that's going to go into Rig C zero zero one, which is the one in one of the server in one of the uh, the tents as well. Uh, and that's going to go in here, and that's going to give me another forty mega hash at least, which is nice. Forty mega hash at around seventy watts, seventy to eighty watts. I don't have those shunt mods shunt modded because I just didn't feel like uh, paying for each G each of those GPUs and to send them out. I had them offline the whole time. I didn't want to pay for the upgrade. I wasn't think it's worth it. And with the merge coming up, I'm not sure how they're gonna, it's going to perform on other algorithms. Probably better, but maybe it's something I can do in the future. I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it. What do you think, guys? Think should I do the shunt mod? Should I send it in to get it uh, get it retrofit to get more hash rate? But the other thing is like it draws more power from the slot, so I don't I don't know if I really want to push it that much. It's not really worth it to me. I don't know. Um, yeah, so these two are in one tent. All the all the rigs starting with the C. I have a, a nomenclature to name these uh, rigs. So rig C is the first one. Rig C is eight, and these are the open air rigs, which are slowly becoming less and less. So these all these ones here, so rig four, five, eight, nine, and ten are all in the garage. I wish you could group them in this view. That would be cool. I think you could. Yeah, so if I could filter by garage. I need to add the tags for that one. But the garage. Yeah, so these are in the garage. I've started tagging them all. And then these other ones over here. Uh, the are all in the basement, so I'm going to start tagging those. Yeah, so it's always an interesting thing. If you're, if you're using Hive guys, uh, and you have the and you have rigs spaced out in different locations, um, in one location, if that makes sense, you can tag them based off the location of the room, so you make it easier to access it. I also go around um, putting uh, printable tags on each of the G uh, each of the rigs, so I know which one's which. It makes it much easier to track them. Anyways, guys, yeah, so I have had a lot of success with this. So splitting this rig into these two. Um, we're hitting a maximum temperature on any of these right now of 65 degrees, which is or 68 degrees, which is really good. And rig eight here, which is actually above rig seven. They're both moved to the bottom of the tent now. Uh, we're only hitting 73 at the highest. Uh, in addition to that, each of the grow tents, uh, I actually have two eight in uh, eight inch inline fans attached to each of those tents. Uh, what I've done recently was I actually went and. Um, I went and I, caught, I actually reversed the flow of the intake fan on, on in the bottom of the tent to actually suck the air out. So those things are really kind of like vacuum packed bags right now. It's really just sucking everything out of there, uh, like a vampire, like a vampire, heat vampire. It's just sucking the air right out of there. Um, if I do get that long term, I would want to move both of those um, fan, uh, both of those uh, ducting to the top of the tent to suck the hot air out. That'd be probably better. Just the way I have it set up now, it was set up to have an intake at the bottom in the winter and then this, and, and to extract it at the top. The problem with my inline fans is I got to go and actually got to disconnect the fan and I got to reverse the fan physically reverse it in the bracket and reattach it in order to reverse the flow. I really wish the fans just had a switch where you can like hit one button and it, it reverses the flow. That would be really cool. I'm not sure if some of those um, AC Infinity fans have that capability, but it'd be interesting to know if there is a fan that allows you to reverse flow uh, with just a switch or direction direction of flow. So becoming a it's gonna come, instead of being a blower, it could be a vacuum, right? So that's it. So those ba those both those tents right now are really just kind of uh, being quite a bit of a vacuum. So another thing I wanted to look up real quick, and I'll just type it up here real quick. Hold on here. Um, was the I'm gonna talk quick about the hash rate. Let's 
So this is basically the hash rate, and this is just an interesting thing I just uh, wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, so that I noticed, and I heard um, in another video recently, the not the hash rate, but the um, yeah. So if you look at the year from last year of June, it was at 570 terahash. Uh, it basically increased month over month, right? So if you look at the beginning of each month, so say July was around 484, and then in the August 528, and then September. 617 if you look at the steady increase that kind of just continued to rise up um even from april to the beginning of april which is like what nine around 957 uh terahash the ethereum hash rate moved up in to may to um around 1.03 petahash but the interesting thing about that is is that it seems to have leveled out uh, at around 1 to 1.05 petahash and hasn't gone up in this month. Now that's plateauing. I wonder if that's a effect of the both the Ethereum um, value of the currency going down of the coin, as well as the news of the merge and, and summer, maybe the heat. I'm not sure. I mean, it is a global thing, right? So people are mining everywhere. But I think a lot of people... Um, they're getting, uh, you know, they're they're, they're selling that uh, coin, or they yield. They're selling it, and they're getting less money now, and less fiat money, to pay for electricity bills. Maybe a lot of them are dropping off. Uh, I'm not sure. Just an interesting observation. Let me know what you guys think about that. But anyways, guys, yeah, these are great. I mean, like I said, three fans versus what the four and the octaminers and whatnot. Uh, it does fine. It sucks the earth through. I don't put anything too demanding into these. Anyways, it's not like I'm putting 3080s, 3090s. If I do, I'm using the more robust uh, cases. Like they do have another one, which I do have two cases of, um, which are pretty good. Uh, right here. I do have two of these as well. Uh, these do have four fans and I do have uh, Leon Lee, two of those ones from um, from Alibaba that are really good as well. So anyways guys, I'm just continuing the switching over to server cases. I am continuing with fighting the heat. We have some relief now for a few weeks at least, or hopefully at least a week. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're doing on the pool, not too much. We have two pools, two different pools open right now. So we have, uh, this one's being paid out in Bitcoin and we have the other one just mining Ethereum directly. And we have uh, essentially Profitability is not too good right now. We're looking at about 45, 32 USD, and the other one we're looking at um, 52. So we're still under we're under 100 dollars US per day, um, minus my electric electric cost, which isn't that good. But once again, if we look at basically what we're yielding the amount per day, we're still yielding a decent amount of actual Ethereum or Bitcoin, and those values will go up in time. Right, right now the value of those currencies have dropped tremendously due to a lot of different market conditions with the interest rates going up, uh, looming recessions and whatnot, and there's all kinds of different things which affect, you know, the emotions of people and what causes them to sell. And when everyone starts panicking and selling and trying to get their money out of the system, it just tanks the value. But if you're resilient and you wait long enough, um, I think it'll pay off pretty good. So yeah, anyways, guys, I will cut it short there, and I will see you in the next one. Make sure you do like, subscribe, comment, and smash that notification bell button, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.